the Nativity of Jesus. 2,000 years ago, the people in Europe didn't know all the other nations of the world. For them, the capital of the world was Rome. The Caesars that ruled in Rome were conquering country by country. Their troops, the Roman legions, fought against the people there. All the countries that were conquered became provinces of the Roman Empire. Among them were Judah, Samaria, and Galilee, which we know today as the State of Israel. The people did not like the Romans. They even hated their conquerors and were mad with them because they ruled their land now. The Romans had to be aware that the Jewish people could start a riot against them anytime. The Jews had been waiting for their Redeemer for a long time, the Messiah, whom God had promised them through the prophets. Prophets were men who could hear God's voice and told the people what they had heard. One of the prophecies was that God would send His Son and make Him King over Israel forever. Oh, if only the Messiah would finally come. The people kept saying to one another, He would cast out the Romans. But it didn't look anything like that at the time. Instead, Caesar August sent messengers throughout the land that declared, Listen, people! Caesar August the Great orders you to go to your birthplaces. You must write your names in lists there. Caesar wants to know from whom he can charge taxes. Move everyone to the city of their ancestors. All people in the Roman Empire should pay their taxes, just like your parents today. They have to give a part of their income to the state. Nowadays, this money is used for the building of hospitals, streets or schools, and of course the government itself. Joseph, a carpenter from Nazareth, also set off to travel to the town of his ancestors. He had a young woman with him, his fiancée Mary. The interesting thing about her was that she was pregnant, even though Mary and Joseph were not married. But they knew that God himself was the father of the child, and its birth had been promised by an angel, a messenger from God. First, the angel had told Mary, and later he had told Joseph, so that he knew that God had chosen Mary to be the mother of the child. Joseph promised her to take care of her and the baby. Joseph had a very prominent forefather, King David and his home was Bethlehem. A hard journey began. When Mary and Joseph finally arrived in Bethlehem, they looked for a place to spend the night. But all rooms in all inns were full. Because of the order of Caesar, many people were on their way to sign into the lists. The two were looking for a place to sleep, but in vain. It was the same scene everywhere they turned. We don't have any space. No room. We're full. Time was running out. Mary felt that her child would come soon. Finally, one host had pity on them. You can spend the night in the stable. It's not very cozy, but after all, you have a roof above you. And so it happened that the Son of God was born in a stable. Very poor, a manger instead of a nursery. It was night, pitch black night. Outside of Bethlehem, there were a few shepherds with their sheep. Shepherds were poor people who were not very liked among the other people just like their work. Many people despised them. Suddenly, the night became very bright. It was brighter than daylight. The shepherds had never seen a light like this before. And in the light, an angel appeared to them. The men were very afraid and scared to death. But the angel said, Do not fear. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. 
Today, in the town of Bethlehem, where King David was born, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, the shepherds saw the sky full of angels. They were uncountable, and they praised God, singing, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to all people who live on earth and do His will. Then the shepherds were alone again. When they had recovered from the shock, they said to one another, Come, let us go to Bethlehem and see what has happened there. And they ran off to the village as fast as they could. They found the stable with Mary, Joseph and the child in the manger. After they had seen the child, the shepherds told everyone they met about what they had seen that night and that they had found the Messiah. The people were amazed. The shepherds returned to their sheep and were praising God because everything had been just like the angel had told them. After one week, Mary and Joseph gave the child a name and called him Jesus. That means the Lord saves, just like the angel Gabriel had told Mary before she became pregnant. Those were exciting days. Some highly educated men who were experts in the field of astronomy came to the capital of Israel, the town of Jerusalem. They came from a country east of Israel. They asked the people on the streets, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We have seen a star that points out his birth. That is why we have come. We want to bow down before him and worship him. The news about the astronomers also came to Herod, who was king in Jerusalem back then. He was allowed to remain living in his palace because he had surrendered to the Roman emperor. Now he was in great terror, hearing of the astronomers and their questions about the new king. What was it with this star? Herod was jealous. Huh, another man on my throne? Uh, that's not going to happen. Immediately he called for the high priest and the man who knew the old writings and the law of God. Tell me where the anointed one of God, this Christ, shall be born. In Bethlehem, in the vicinity of Judah, your majesty, God has spoken through the prophet Micah. Bethlehem, you are not the smallest of all cities of Judah, for the prince of my people Israel will come from you. When King Herod heard that, he called for the astronomers and questioned them about everything and asked them when they had seen the star in their home country. Then he said, So then, go to Bethlehem. I know now that you will find the child there. Ask for him in the village, and when you have found him, return to me and tell me where he is, so that I can come and worship him too. But all he really wanted was to know where the new king was, who endangered his throne. The astronomers traveled on, and then they saw the bright shining star again. They were grateful and went in its direction. The star led them to Bethlehem, where they found Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. They entered the house, knelt down, and worshipped the child. They brought him gold, frankincense, a very fragrant rosin, and myrrh, a healing plant, all of which were very expensive and costly gifts. Then they left the child Jesus again and stayed at an inn. In their sleep, an angel appeared to them and said, 
Don't obey King Herod. Don't travel through Jerusalem, but take a different road home. After the astronomer's visit, Joseph also had a dream of an angel. The angel told him, Joseph, get up! You must flee to Egypt with your wife and child. King Herod is chasing for Jesus and wants to kill him. Stay in Egypt for a while. Joseph grabbed all their belongings, took his wife Mary and Jesus, and they fled across the border to Egypt. Meanwhile, King Herod was waiting for the astronomers. When they did not return, it dawned on him that he had been betrayed. He was raging mad, called for his servants and ordered, All small boys in Bethlehem and around Bethlehem that are two years and younger must be killed. Spare not one, they must all die. A deadly command. Herod gave it because he did not want another king to have his throne. He wanted to reign. He alone. The soldiers rode to Bethlehem. They grabbed the little boys from their mothers and killed them. The women screamed, the men cried, and all grieved and were desperate. The suffering was indescribable. Mary, Joseph and Jesus still lived in Egypt, until Herod got very sick and finally died. Now his son Archelaus was king. Again, an angel spoke to Joseph. Joseph, take your wife and child and return to Israel. The people who wanted to kill Jesus are no longer alive. Don't be afraid. Go to Galilee, to the village of Nazareth. There you can live and work. After that, the small family came back to their home country and Jesus grew up in Nazareth.